When it comes to the video game collecting scene, one of the terms that gets thrown around a lot is CIB. But first of all, what does CIB even mean? Well, it's an acronym, and before you try to guess yourself what it stands for, I can just tell you it's generally thought to stand for complete in box. Although, if saying three words is asking too much, you can always make life simpler and just say complete. But then the question becomes, what exactly does complete mean? Typically, it it means having three essential things. The game itself, the manual, and then whatever it came in. Typically a case or a box. But what if it came with something else, like other random little inserts? I suppose you have to draw the line somewhere. I know some people who need to have the original little plastic baggies. Certain cartridges came in to call it complete. I, 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 I know it's gotta be the original plastic baggies the exact ones. Use a fake and good luck trying to fall asleep at night, buddy. Those little baggies will keep you up. I think the idea behind having something complete is that way it has everything that came with it the day you bought it. Or the day whoever bought it bought it. But then what about the creepy smile the cashier gave me the day I bought Eternal Darkness? I can't find that. This isn't complete. Perhaps one of the biggest reasons given by people who don't collect games complete is that they just want to play the game. So why do you need all this other kerfuffle? Well, you don't. But the same could be said for the games themselves. Collecting original copies of games isn't the only way to play them, but people want to. And an even further extension of that is to collect the game complete. Plus, manuals can supplement the gameplay experience, at least in theory. Yeah, not everybody reads these things, however adamant they might be about having them. Sometimes it's just about knowing you have it, more than anything. And as much as you don't need to collect original copies of games to be able to play them, you also don't need to own manuals to be able to read them. You can find a PDF of almost any manual you can think of. Does that remove some of the magic, though? You you betcha. I compiled a bunch of PDFs for games I own, and guess how often you catch me leafing through those things? There's something about a physical manual, flipping through the pages, knowing its history, just makes for a better experience, at least for some people. I've always gotten a kick out of some of the manuals that are huge, really giving you a lot to sink your teeth into. If you had a book club, you could make them one of the assignments. Forget the game, the manual is an experience in itself. I think there's also something to be said about how, even though manuals are pretty well known nowadays, I mean, I'd say even the younger generation seem to know what they are. Yeah, they know what manuals are, right? But even though manuals are pretty well known nowadays, and despite there being some exceptions where newer games do still come with manuals, as more and more time goes on where not having a physical manual come with the game is the norm, the games that used to come with manuals will seem more novel. And you know what that means? The more novel something is considered to be, the more collectible it's considered to be. I think it's very telling that collectors have decided to use the word complete to describe games in such a condition, with the implication being that not having everything that comes with the game makes it incomplete. Things are missing. Something is wrong. Almost like a game is naked by itself. Oh gosh, close your eyes. Sonic, would you put something on? For goodness sake, have some decency. But people who collect games loose don't see anything wrong with it. Obviously, otherwise they wouldn't do it. To them, it's just the game is the game. All that other stuff is just extra. As kids, a lot of it would just get thrown out anyway. Although, in all honesty, I think that torment a lot of us regardless of our collecting preferences. What you don't see very often is people who collect just the case but not the manual. My guess is because it still feels incomplete to people. Some sort of half measure, like wearing a shirt but no pants. Only Donald Duck can seem to pull off that look. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean there aren't people who own games with
with cases but no manuals. Heck, for some games, it's because a physical manual doesn't even exist. But typically, people who have just the case and game are what I like to call whatever I can get collectors. And what do they do? You guessed it, they get whatever they can. Maybe some games are missing a case, maybe some games are missing a manual, maybe some games suck. Wait, isn't that a different type of collector? But for the whatever I can get collectors, they're not intentionally avoiding manuals, they just don't mind not having them. It's not like they'd be bummed out if their game did include a manual. Another reason people may want the case for a game is to protect the game, and while you don't necessarily need to have the original case to do this, it is still an added benefit of collecting it. People sometimes ask me how I keep my cartridges protected if they're loose. Witness protection program. They're perfectly safe. Okay, but what about accessibility? Typically, you want your games to be as accessible as possible, assuming you want to play them. Quick little experiment for you. What's faster, option number one? or option of <laughs> Well, I guess it's option number two. But spending a little extra time to physically handle our games never scared us retro gamers. After all, we're crazy enough to enjoy doing this, aren't we? So what's a few extra seconds to open a case? Well, except what if it's a box, and specifically these gosh darned cardboard boxes? It feels like you're damaging them every time you open them, so don't. Keep them closed. But there's a game in there. What do we do? Well, get it out of there, but then keep it out of there. Yeah, some people will store their games separately from their cases. That way they can have access to playing their games without risk of damaging the cases. Yeah, just looking at your cases with the old puppy dog eyes won't hurt them. But then what about space? Collecting your games complete tends to take up more space. And especially if you're separating the games themselves from their cases or boxes. Plus, I know some people just don't like the way cardboard boxes look displayed. That is, if the cardboard has significant wear, which these thin cardboard boxes are prone to have. Now, when it comes to games that are in the disc format, this is where even a lot of the cartridge-only folks like myself will hop on board the I want my games complete ship. A cartridge is mostly self-protected, but a disc is about as exposed as it gets. And for some cases, the manual doubles as the cover, so you definitely want the manual. I mean, what the heck is this? It's like getting mooned through a window or something. And sure, if you go disc only, you can stick them all into something like a binder, but even that that just doesn't feel right to some collectors. But what does feel right to a lot of collectors is the amount of money that you can save going disc only. And I'm not just talking about a little bit cheaper. For some games, we're talking a fraction of the price. The same goes for cartridge only as well, especially if we're talking about games with cardboard boxes in good condition, since they're harder to come by. Honestly, saving money is probably the biggest reason why people don't collect games complete. I mean, saving money is a big reason why people do a lot of things. Just talk to my blender, 25 bucks and going on six years strong. And for a lot of people, having just the games by themselves is good enough. You know, when it comes to collecting, I notice a lot of all or nothing mentalities. Even I'm guilty of that. You don't accumulate a bread bag clip collection like mine without big dreams. But when it comes to collecting your games complete, if it's something you already do for all your games, your mind has already been made up. But my advice for those of you who don't already do it, but are interested, would be this. Consider just collecting a complete copy of a game or two that's significant to you. I have Rocket Knight Adventures complete because it's special to me, even though my other Genesis games are just loose carts. I'm still looking for that t-shirt they advertise, though. I've searched online for over 10 years at this point and never seen anything but fan-made shirts. Should I just scan this form and mail it in to see what happens? All right. But with that said, I'd be curious to hear what your preference is when it comes to complete games. Are you all in, all out, or most likely somewhere in the middle? So for that and anything else you'd like to say, leave a comment down below and I will see ya in the next video.
Incredible. Whoa. Wow. I tell you what, I know what I'm talking about at dinner tonight. He's the Red Cooper, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the Red Cooper, oh yeah. Any post that you like, what he had to say.